On the 40th anniversary of Earth Day in April of 2010, the race to drill faster and deeper to feed America's hunger for oil resulted in the largest environmental disaster in U.S. history. Upwards of 200 million gallons gushed into the Gulf of Mexico for over three months. The widespread effects of this oil disaster, both ecologically and economically, will be devastating for years to come. What remains to be seen is whether or not this becomes our crude awakening. So this is a wake-up call. It is a time for us to act. We can't grow numb to this. The oil industry and their champions spend millions every year misleading the public that ending domestic offshore drilling is impossible. They would have us believe that we can drill offshore to secure our energy independence from hostile nations. And that is simply not true. Americans consume 20 million barrels of oil a day. We consume nearly 25% of the world's oil, yet we only produce about 3%. That's just a drop in the bucket. We could drill in every national park, wildlife refuge, and coastline, and still have to import 59% of our oil. The truth is that only 20% of the oil we consume in the United States comes from the Gulf of Mexico and the Persian Gulf. And in order to eliminate the need for oil from these gulfs, we must reduce consumption by 4 million barrels per day. In May 2010, the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy launched the Clean Energy Gulf Challenge to solicit ideas from the nation's brightest minds on what it would take to end drilling in these two gulfs. From the Gulf Challenge, four solutions emerged. Reducing our dependence on oil is feasible with the energy alternatives we have available today. Increasing the efficiency of our vehicles is one of the most important. It's really the workhorse that we're going to be able to wean ourselves off of the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Mexico. New federal fuel efficiency rules starting in 2012 will significantly reduce our oil consumption by the year 2020. We'll consume 1.2 million fewer barrels of oil a day, cut emissions equivalent to taking 31 million cars off the road, and save drivers $34 billion in 2020. We could easily be getting 40 plus, 50 miles a gallon from our vehicles. The technology's there. Again, it's just a matter of implementing these steps that increase our efficiency. Compared to petroleum, alternative fuels are significantly cleaner. Some produce up to 78% fewer carbon dioxide emissions than fossil fuels. Cellulosic ethanol and biodiesel are two alternative options that are leading the way in our region. You can grow switchgrass. Switchgrass will grow in areas where you normally can't grow other crops and you basically use it as an alternative. So cellulosic ethanol really is not competing with our food sources. Genera Energy recently broke ground on a biomass innovation park in Tennessee, leading the way to create biofuels from switchgrass and other materials. Sustainable biodiesel is an available fuel today. In order to be sustainable, uh, we work with local restaurants and utilize their waste fryer oil as our primary feedstock to make biodiesel. Biodiesel is a very viable fuel source for anybody that has a diesel vehicle for trucks and for fleets and for people who have diesel cars and runs clean. It's a complete loop cycle here where we're taking waste grease from restaurants, we're basically keeping it out of the sewers and the drain systems, we're circulating it back and turning it into a useful fuel and displacing uh, fossil fuels. The Southeast is well equipped to embrace innovative technology and clean fuels. The 100% electric Nissan LEAF and its batteries will be manufactured in Tennessee and more than 2,500 charging stations, some powered by solar panels, are planned throughout our region as part of the National EV Project. I think we are literally on the verge of a revolution in the automobile industry. Nissan is bringing the first electric vehicle to market on a large scale. It is completely zero emissions. It has no dependency on petroleum oil at all. In order to truly capture the promise of zero emissions vehicles, we also need to increase the amount of clean energy in our electric grid. One of the most important things is be a smart commuter. In other words, make sure that if you're going to go somewhere, think about how you 
position your trips so that you maximize what you accomplish when you're out. Find healthy ways. There's many times that people can walk to places that they don't necessarily need their vehicle. Think about using a bicycle. Uh, think about using mass transit if you can. Uh, couple those things together. So you can make personal choices without spending a lot of money that can actually significantly reduce your consumption. The truth is, we can't afford another disaster like the Deepwater Horizon spill. The time to embrace alternatives is now. We have the technology, we have the innovation. All we're missing really is the political will to do this. This is a time that we need to act.